Hello everyone. Good morning. Am I audible? Yes, perfect. Okay. So let's start with the session guys. Uh, let's start with the session. So what have we discussed in the previous session guys? What have we discussed? We saw something called as decisional statements or conditional statements, right? So we saw, we saw something called as if, if else, if else if, nested if and switch statement. Okay, whenever I had to take decisions here, I will always make use of decision making statements here. Okay, so this has, this is what we have seen in the previous session. So sir, what are we going to see in today's session? Okay, so today's session is going to be very interesting here because we're going to see one logical part here. Okay, very, very important logical part. Sir, what is it, sir? Okay, let us try to talk about it. Okay. So in today's session, we are going to talk about something called as looping statements. What is the topic we are going to discuss today? We are going to discuss something called as looping statements here. Okay. So what are looping statements? Okay. Looping statements are nothing but, okay. Whenever I want to repeat a set of instructions, okay. Whenever there is a repetition involved or redundancy involved, we always make use of looping statements. Okay. So the first thing, why do we come across looping statement is for in order to repeat. Okay. If I have to re repeat some set of instructions here, I will always come across looping statements. Okay. Secondly, and I also used for traversing purpose as well. And what is the second reason why I make use of looping statements for traversing purpose? What is traversing, sir? See, there are a group of data. Imagine there are a group of data. I want to fetch one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one. I need to fetch them. Okay. That is called as traversing the data. Okay. So trying to fetch the data one by one, one by one, one by one. In those particular scenarios, we always come across something called as looping statements here. Okay. So what is the job of looping statements raised? Looping statements are, I mean, we, with the help of looping statements, we can repeat or whenever there is redundancy involved, we always make use of looping statement. Loop means repeat. Okay. Traversing purpose meaning there is a hell lot of data here. I need to traverse them one by one, one by one, one by one. For that particular scenario, I make use of looping statements again here. Clear? Now, what are the different looping statements we have in Java, sir? In Java, we have something called as for loop. Okay. Second, we have something called as while loop. Third, we have something called as do while loop and fourth we have something called as nested loops okay nested for loop okay we can have nested while loop also but yeah these are the uh, three important okay and nested for loop is one such but out of this four who has a lot of importance for loop so if you know for loop here it becomes very very easy working around with the data here so it becomes what it becomes very very easy in order to work with the data here okay so this is what we are supposed to understand okay loop means repeating okay or traversing so these are the two scenarios we generally come across looping statements and what are the different loops loops we have for loop while loop do while loop and nested for loop so these are the different looping statements that is supported by Java here. Okay. Now <coughs> let us see the working of each and every functionalities. Okay. Now the first thing which we are going to discuss is something called as for loop. Okay. What are we going to discuss now? For loop. Sir, why do we make use of for loop, sir? Okay, for repeating purpose, for repeating purpose. Now, whenever we talk about for loop, right? Okay, I know how many times to repeat a task. For example, your requirement is do this task for five times. 
do this task for 10 times do this task for 100 times you know how many times to repeat a task okay so therefore always we make use of for loop okay for loop is a looping statement wherein we know how many times to repeat a task okay it is used to repeat a task for a specified number of times okay <coughs> We know the start point and we also know the end point here. Clear? Now we are supposed to talk about the beautiful syntax. Okay, we are supposed to talk about what? The beautiful syntax here. So how does the syntax go on? It's a very, very simple syntax. For open parenthesis, close parenthesis, open curly braces, close curly braces. So this is the scope of for loop and the set of instructions which I need to repeat has to be written within this loop here, within this block here. Okay, so if I have to write anything uh, which I have to repeat, I have to write, write it within this specific block here. Now over here, the first job here is, okay, the first job is initialization, okay. The first parameter it is going to accept is initialization. Then it is going to accept the condition. Okay. And finally, it is going to accept the updation. Okay. So these are the three scenarios. I mean, three parameters the for loop is going to accept. What is it? Initialization, condition, up, uh, updation separated by semicolon. So this is how we are supposed to make use of a basic for loop here. Okay. So we have a lot of one more loop that is enhanced for loop that we'll be talking about it a bit later. Okay. Now I'll tell you one scenario guys. You understood the syntax here, but your requirement here. Okay. Let me tell you the requirement here. Your requirement is to print. Okay. Your requirement is to print. Hello five times okay what is the requirement to print hello five times uh, your requirement is to print hello five times you know what will a dumb person do here okay i will tell you so now in order to develop a java program we can either make use of a for loop a uh, sorry notepad or notepad plus plus right so now i will generally make use of notepad plus plus now okay i open notepad plus plus in order to develop and execute java program okay so now here, uh, you can make use of notepad also, okay? Simple, we know both the ways of using it, right? Now, I will create a class, class, and the class name is for loop demo, okay? Open curly braces and close curly braces. So this is the scope of for loop here, okay? Now, I'll also have my uh you know main method public static void main within parenthesis it is string array of arguments again open curly braces and close curly braces so we have a beautiful class and we have our main method wherein the execution will begin from so can we save the program first yeah absolutely so i'll tell control s when I tell control S, it is asking me, Uday, where do you want to save the program? I want to save on the desktop and I have created a folder called as Java programs. Okay, on the desktop, I have created a folder called as Java programs. Over there, class name and file name should be same and then save as search for Java source file. Okay, Java source. When I click it, it is automatically the extension will be taken and I'll tell it as save. So your Java program is saved successfully. So what is your requirement? Your requirement is to print hello five times. Okay. Your requirement is to print what? Hello. How many times? Five times. Okay. If there was a dumb person, do person. Okay. What will he do here? He will tell system dot out dot print ln okay he will write hello this will print only once okay when i do system dot out dot print ln hello 
he is going to print hello only once <coughs> sorry twice thrice four times five times okay so the requirement was to print hello world five times so he made use of five print statements okay now so hello 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 five times will be printed don't you think so is a dumb guy here okay what if i have to print 50 times will i make use of 50 print statements okay if i have to write it for thousand times here will you make use of thousand print statements absolutely no got the clarity here five times okay we made use of this what if i have to do the same task for like thousand times here will it work fine is it efficient enough absolutely no okay so we are all not dumb okay we are all not gundus okay so what are we supposed to do here in order to do it in order to make it efficient we will always make use of looping statement sir how sir how will we make use of looping statement sir i will tell you okay first of all how do you write your loop okay how do you write your loop here for okay open parenthesis close parenthesis open curly braces close curly braces this is the scope of a for loop right for open parenthesis close open curly braces close this is the scope of your for loop here now here your requirement is to print hello five times so the first parameter is initialization so i will take a variable int i equals to one so i equals to one meaning it's like i'm starting from one okay till which position till five five times no i will tell i should be lesser than or equal to five and slowly i am incrementing so i plus plus okay i'm incrementing so i'll make use of i plus plus and here what is the print statement i have here i have to print system dot out dot print ln i will write it as hello actually speaking i'm done with the program i will definitely get the desired output here so whatever i'm expecting i will definitely get it but you'll be wondering how okay you'll all be wondering how so let us understand the scenario so there is i and there is i is lesser than or equal to 5 okay so these are the two parameters which we have here okay so now we will try to understand this in a beautiful manner here okay now everyone understand guys one program you understand we are done actually so the first job is initialization what is the first job initialization i value will get initialized to one okay next i will check the condition what is step number two i have to check the condition what is my value one is one lesser than or equal to five yes it is true once the condition is true the control will get inside the loop here the control will get inside the loop so it comes inside so what am i supposed to print i am supposed to print hello hello will get printed after printing hello the control will go back where to i plus so, plus <coughs> i plus plus meaning i value was one now i value will get incremented to 2 why i plus plus it will become 2 next again i have to check the condition this is step number 3 i have to check the condition what is my value 2 is 2 lesser than or equal to 5 yes it is true again again the control will come inside what am i supposed to print hello hello will get printed again the loop will go back what am i supposed to do now i plus plus meaning i value was 2 now it will become 3 here then again check the condition what is my value 3 is 3 lesser than or equal to 5 yes it is true again the control will come inside and what am i supposed to print hello hello will be printed again it's a loop loop meaning it has to go back to the updation so i plus plus from 3 i value will become 4 now again what am i supposed to do check the condition is 4 lesser than or equal to 5 yes it is true okay again the loop will come inside what am i supposed to print hello hello will be printed again it's a loop 
loop meaning it has to go back i plus plus now i value will become what now i value will become phi from i it was i was 1 2 3 4 5 it is slowly incrementing i plus plus meaning it became phi and phi will again get checked here you know i have to check the condition so is phi lesser than or equal to phi yes it's true phi is lesser than or equal to phi control will come inside what am i supposed to print hello hello will get printed and the loop will go back and the loop will go back where i plus plus now i value will get incremented to 6 now again i check the condition 6 i check the condition is 6 lesser than or equal to 5 no it is false here so once the condition is false what am i supposed to do once the condition is false here i will stop i will stop and what was your requirement to print hello five times have i printed hello five times yes so this is called as loop see first initialization will happen after that condition execution then conduct updation condition execution updation condition execution updation so this is looping see condition execution updation condition execution blah 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 it is looping so that's the reason we call it as a looping statement generally used for repeating a set of instructions for the clarity here so this is what we are supposed to understand when it comes to looping statements clear now when i go back to my program okay and what is your necessity your necessity is to print hello hello right five times but now five times you cannot make use of print statement in order to make it efficient you will make use of a for loop okay you will make use of for loop now here first job is initialization you will initialize any variable with the value one okay you can initialize to anything you know i'm just initializing it to one for how many times i need to repeat five times so i should be lesser than or equal to five <coughs> i is one until it reaches five one two three four five so slowly it will increment by one here and what am i supposed to repeat here i have to repeat system dot out dot print ln hello here this is all about the data here now in order to execute it what am i supposed to do in order to execute it i have to open command prompt sir how will i open command prompt sir okay go back to the folder where your java programs are stored and in the path here okay in the path here just search for cmd once you search for cmd over here what will happen here the command prompt will get opened in a beautiful manner okay now the command prompt will get opened in a beautiful manner okay so now you need to execute it okay you need to execute the program here so how will you execute it so is it necessary to you know change the uh, path here no it's already pointing to c users admin here so you need not c users admin desktop and java programs you can start directly compiling java c for loop demo dot java so we are compiling this particular file in a beautiful manner so the compilation will happen here after the compilation here interpretation will happen so i have to just give the java and the class name that is more than sufficient so when i tell java for loop demo here i'm just giving the uh, data here did i get my expected output that is hello is getting printed how many times hello is getting printed five times so this is all about how do you analyze and try to print the specific content here got it everyone i hope everyone understood this simple example correct so now so we understood the requirement here now sir my requirement is to print okay what is your next requirement here so my requirement is to print uh, this one phi uh, sorry not this not this not this one two three four five sir i want to print one two three four five sir so what will i do here simple again simple simple so if there was a dumb person okay if there was a dumb person what would he do okay if there was a dumb person what would he do 
he will make use of print statements okay so he will print what he will print ln 1 here okay he'll print 1 similarly how many print statements he'll have five print statements okay he will print 5 he will print 4 he will print 3 he will print 2 so if there was a guldu person what will he do here he'll print 1 2 3 4 5 okay is it valid here absolutely valid guys it will absolutely work 1 2 3 4 5 will be printed but my requirement is I have to use some basic common sense and try to reduce the complexity level over here, right? So in order to make it efficient, okay, in order to make it efficient, what am I supposed to do here? In order to make it efficient, I have to make use of looping statements, correct? So what is the small funda, sir? What is the small changes I have to implement here, sir? rather than printing okay rather than printing hello i will just print it as sop i will just print the value of what i will print the value of i sir how sir will i print the value of i will i get the output here absolutely yes how sir can you tell me sir i'll tell you see i is one correct is one lesser than or equal to five true control will come inside i will print the value of i what is my value one no so one will get printed loop goes back i plus plus i value will become two check the condition is two lesser than or equal to five true control comes inside what am i supposed to print two goes back i will become three is three lesser than or equal to five yes true control comes back three will get printed goes back four five because i value is changing see one two three four five Constantly, I value is changing from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5. It keeps on increasing. Therefore, I have to follow this basic funda over here. Okay. So, therefore, what am I supposed to do in order to print this specific content here? I have to make use of a looping statement. Okay. I have to make use of a looping statement. So, how will I make use of for? <coughs> Okay, this is the basic funda over here. Okay, basic schema structure. Okay, now here, what am I supposed to do here? Sir, you are supposed to print what, sir? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Correct. Int i equals to 1. Why? Because I want to print 1 for the very first time. Then later, i should be less than or equal to 5. Okay, and i plus plus. See, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5 until it reaches 5. I am starting from 1, ending it till 5. And there is a gradual increment by 1. Why? Because I++. plus plus. Okay. Now here, what am I supposed to print here? I am supposed to print the value of I here. I will print the value of I here. So now when I go back to my program, okay, when I go back to my program, compile it, okay, and interpret it, see here, I am getting some wrong answer here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and I'm getting I, I, I. I'm just getting the value of I, I, I. Why is it so? Sir, you are printing I value in double quotes, sir. So whatever you give in double quotes will get printed as it is, sir. You have to print it as I, sir. Just a variable I. This I is a variable, no? Correct, no? Int I equals to 1. I is a variable. So the value of i is changing 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, blah, blah, blah. It keeps on incrementing. So we are supposed to make use of i value here, right? So now when I execute my program, I will definitely get the output now. See, I have compiled my Java program beautifully. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll, uh, I have compiled it once again. Yeah. Now when I execute, did I get the expected output? Yes, I got the expected output of this entire scenario here okay so this is what we are supposed to understand when it comes to looping statement here got it guys so you all got the basic idea about looping statements here do you all have any doubts as of now anyone having any doubts guys as of now guys any doubts as of now Very good. Perfect. Okay. 
Great. Okay, so we all understood this expected data here. Now here, my requirement. Okay, sir, what is your requirement, sir? My requirement is I want to print. Okay, the next part. Okay, I want to print what uh, this one. Okay, my necessity is I want to print one four five uh, six one four seven one four eight one four nine and one five zero here this is my expected requirement okay i want to print this numbers here so i will definitely not make use of uh, multiple print statements okay but common sense i'll apply and i'll make use of a looping statement for loop <coughs> open curly braces and close curly braces now here it's common sense that I want to print 146 for the very first time, sir. So what will I do here? Int i equals to 146. Because I want to print for this for the very first time. No, I'll take initialize i value to 146. And what is the last value I'm supposed to print? 150. i should be lesser than or equal to 150. And what is the gradual growth here? Plus 1. What is the gradual growth? Plus 1. What is the gradual growth plus one gradual growth plus one so in order to increment by one i will make use of ply plus plus okay so this is what we are supposed to understand simple i have to print the i value i stay i am done with the program here see i value will get initialized what is my i value i value is 146 now check the condition is 146 lesser than or equal to 150 true control will come inside i value what is i value 146 146 is printed control goes back i plus plus okay i plus plus meaning i value will get incremented to 147 after that i check the condition again is 147 lesser than or equal to 150 yes again it comes inside i value I value is 147 that will get printed and the loop goes back okay now it is i plus plus i plus plus meaning it will become 148 then i check the condition is 148 lesser than or equal to 150 true again control comes inside i value 148 will get printed control will go back i plus plus okay once the control will go back here i value will become what I value will become 149 check the condition is 149 lesser than or equal to 150 true comes inside I value 149 is printed loop goes back I plus plus I value will become 150 goes back check the condition is 150 lesser than or equal to 150 yes loop comes inside I value 150 will get printed goes back 150 is printed now I value will become what now 151 is 151 less than or equal to 150 no stop it and i have got the required output so this is how guys okay one or two programs if you have understood the working the remaining things will become very 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 easy for you all okay so this is what we are supposed to understand when it comes to looping statements the logical aspect of the data here clear now <coughs> sorry yeah now let us try to talk about this entire part here okay let me go back to uh, this example itself now let me create a new class i don't want to write it again now control n for loop i'll write it as example okay the class name is for loop example and then i will open curly braces yeah right so now over here let me save this particular program okay for loop example dot java and save as java source file yep okay i'm done so now in order to print okay one four five uh, then one oh sorry sorry six no six one four seven one four eight one four nine and one five zero what am i supposed to do looping statement for what is the first value i'm supposed to print here i'm supposed to print okay Int, you can take any variable guys x equals to 146 x is lesser than or equal to 150 
and x plus plus. It's not that you have to always take i only. You know, most of the time we take i because we are obsessed with the word letter called as i. But yeah, you can take any variables for that matter. It doesn't matter. So I have to just print x value. So now when I try to compile it, so I'll just compile example dot Java. Okay, so the compilation should be successful. Uh, yes. Now after this, I will uh, interpret the example. Did I get the expected output? 146, 147, 148, 149, and 150. Okay, I got the output. Now, you know, the reason I'm doing so many examples is for your understanding. Okay, now we got the basic idea about how is a looping statement going to work like. Clear? So we got the basic structure of it, right? Now, we understood so many things. Okay, we understood so many things. Correct? Now, if I want to print, okay, if I want to print the basic structure, wait, print. Okay. What is my requirement now? Okay. A couple of more requirements here. Okay. We would be done. Okay. If I want to print is this space here. Yeah, that is sufficient. Okay. What is your requirement here? My requirement is to print five, four, three, two, one in reverse order. Is it possible to do it? Absolutely. Yes. But we have to be smart enough. We have to be smart enough. Okay. Now, sir, you are trying to print 5 for the very first time. Okay, great. So, I will tell int i equals to 5. Because I am trying to print 5 for the very first time. No, I have to go in decrement way. 5, I will print it. Some condition should be there. Okay. And uh, 5 to 4, minus 1. 4 to 3, minus 1. 3 to 2, minus 1. 1 to 2, uh, 2 to 1 minus 1. So there is a gradual decrement of 1. So I will write it as minus minus. So now I will tell SOP I value. Now here what should be the condition? Any idea guys? What should be the condition over here? Okay. So now let me tell you here. Okay. <clears throat> Can you tell me here what will be the expected part here? What will be the condition over here? Okay. Your condition over here is I should be Okay, since you're going in the reverse order, it should be greater than or equal to 1. Why? 5 is greater than or equal to 1. 4 is greater than or equal to 1. 3 is greater than, 2 is greater than, but 1 is equal to 1. So if these values are greater than or equal to 1, so I have to make use of this specific logic here. So therefore, what will I do here? What is my I value step number 1? I value is 5. Okay. Then check the condition. Okay. Is phi. Okay. I'll check here. Is phi greater than or equal to 1? Yes. True. Control comes inside. What is my value? Phi will get printed. Then loop goes back. Okay. Step number 2 done. Step number 3. I minus minus. I value will become 4. Then check the condition. Is 4 greater than or equal to 1? True. Okay. Again the loop will come inside. I value. 4 will get printed the loop will go back i minus minus so i value will become 3 check the condition is 3 greater than or equal to 1 yes loop comes inside i value what is my value 3 3 will get in printed goes back i minus minus it will become 2 check the condition is 2 greater than or equal to 1 yes control comes inside what am i supposed to print 2 control will go back i minus minus I value will become 1. Check the condition. Is 1 greater than or equal to 1? Yes. Comes inside. I value will get printed. Now again when I tell I minus minus it will become 0. Is 0 greater than or equal to 1? No. Stop it. And I have got my desired output of this entire process here. So you have to be smart enough in order to print the content in reverse order. Okay very very smart here okay so you don't have to screw it up over here okay so be very smart in order to understand the respected data here okay so now here we got the expected output okay we got the expected output here right so now can we execute the same program here in order to print it in reverse order so i'm lazy enough i'll just copy paste it 
I'll copy paste this for loop, but I'll change the logic over here. Okay, the schema syntax I'll copy it down. So now if I want to print what? What is your requirement here? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So int i equals to 5. I should be greater than or equal to 1 and i minus minus and I have to print the value of i. Correct now. This is the schema here. Okay. Now let when I execute it, just check okay if I'm able to get the output or not. If I'm able to get the output or not. Am I able to get the output? Yes, I'm able to get the output. But you'll have a few pro questions here. Sir, what if I write it as only greater than? What will happen? If I write it as greater than, it will be like 5 is greater than 1, 4 is greater than 1, 3 is greater than 1, 2 is greater than 1. So I will be able to print 5, 4, 3, 2. 1 won't get printed. Because in order to print 1, I have to give it as equal to. If I don't give equal to, it will only print me 5, 4, 3, 2. A step. Only 4 things will be printed here. Yeah, got the clarity? Because I am decrementing till 1, not including 1. Clear? And if you will be like, sir, I have to give it as greater than or equal to 1. But what if I give it as lesser than or equal to 1, sir? What will be the output? See, first, i value is initialized to 5. Is 5 lesser than or equal to 1? No, the control will never ever get inside the loop. So that I will not get any output at all. See, did I get any output? See, I did not get any output at all. Why? Because i value is 5 for the very first time. Is 5 lesser than or equal to 1? No, the control will never ever get inside the loop. So the condition has to be true. That is when the control will get inside the loop here. So the condition is only not true. How will it get? So you have to be very, very smart. Okay. When should we use greater than? When should we use lesser than? Lesser than is used when we are trying to move in the normal direction, forward direction. Greater than is used whenever we are moving in the reverse order. Okay, now decrementing. Okay, now. And now there is one more question. Sir, what if I give it as i++, plus plus, sir? What if I give it as i++, plus plus, sir? Okay. i is 5. Is 5 greater than or equal to 1? True. 5 will get printed. i++, plus plus, it becomes 6. Is 6 greater than or equal to 1? Print 6. 7. Is 7 greater than or equal to 7? 7, 8, 9, 10, blah, 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 blah. It keeps on looping. Why? Because all the values are greater than or equal to 1. This will lead to infinite loop here. This will lead to what? Infinite loop here. See, it's going on, going on, going on, going on. I abruptly terminate by pressing Control C. Okay? Control C meaning it will terminate. So we have to be very, very precise in the training part, okay, the tracing part. If we know how do we trace the data here, okay, we are supposed to understand the basic logic here, okay. So this is what we are supposed to understand, okay. I hope you all got the clarity about this entire process here, clear. In order to go in reverse order, we have to always make use of the logic. Guys, in very simple terms here, okay. Uh, you know, we have to be smart, okay? If you know how do we trace a program, okay? How do we trace? Oh, what if I give this? What if I give that? You're logically very strong then, okay? You can look at the uh, look at the program and predict it. This is what I want you all from, okay? This is what I want, okay? So this is all about the looping statement. I have a couple of things here. <clears throat> I'll tell you, okay? So now, guys, uh, yeah, there's some announcement here, which I'll be doing it at the last here. Okay, once we are going to terminate the session, I'll do the announcement here. Okay, so great. Okay, now here, what are we supposed to do now? Okay, what are we supposed to do here? Okay, so there's one question. Sir, what is the decrement? You know, I mean, uh, the updation is of two numbers. Very good. This is what I'm going to do now. So, sir, what is your requirement here? My requirement is to print. Okay, this is very interesting now. Okay, uh, concentrate everyone. Okay, so once we can do this, we'll try to do at the data here. Okay, so now here first and the foremost thing here. Okay, the first and the foremost thing here. What I'll do here. I want to print 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. What is your requirement guys? You are supposed to print even numbers from 1 to 10. 
if you could closely observe no you are supposed to print even numbers from okay 1 to 10 here so what is the basic funda sir what is the logic we'll be utilizing it sir very simple guys okay very 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 simple uh, okay now for open parenthesis close open curly braces close so this is my program okay now what is the logic first you are supposed to print okay two so i will initialize int i equals to two okay i equals to two here after that okay i have to print it till 10 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So they are all lesser, right? So i is lesser than or equal to 10. But now if you could see the updation here, it's plus 2. Updation plus 2. Updation plus 2. Updation plus 2. So the book, I mean, as soon as you get it as plus 2, what will you do, you know? i plus plus will increase by 1. But here you'll write it as i plus 2. Okay, great. Will it work here? No, it won't work. Why? There is some lo logical mistake. I will tell you what is it. Sir, first i value is 2, sir. Very good. i value will become 2. Now check the condition. Is 2 lesser than or equal to 10? Yes, it is true. Control will come inside. What will happen? 2 will get printed. Control will go back. Okay, control will go back. When I tell i plus 2, i value is 2. 2 plus 2 is nothing but 4. That 4 we have added, okay, so that I have to reinitialize it back to i only. i plus 2 meaning 2 plus 2. After adding, you got the value of 4. But what am I supposed to do? That 4 has to get initialized back to i only. Why? Because we are playing around with i only here. We are playing around with the variable i. So I have to reinitialize back. So now i value will become what? i value will become 4. Now again, check the condition. Is 4 lesser than or equal to 10? Yes. Control will come inside. 2 value. That is i value. That is 4. 4 will get printed. Control will go back. What is i value? 4. 4 plus 2, it will become 6. 6 I will initialize back to i. So i value will become what? i value will become 6. Then check the condition. Is 6 lesser than or equal to 10? Yes. Control will come inside. What is my value? i value is 6. Control will go back. What is i plus 2? i plus 2 is nothing but 6 plus 2. What is 6 plus 2? 8. 6 plus 2 is 8. Again, that will get initialized to i. So, what will be my i value? i value will be 8. Check the condition. Is 8 less than or equal to 10? Yes. 10, 8 will get printed. Goes back. i plus 2. 8 plus 2 is 10. That 10 has to get initialized back to i. So, i value will become 10. Check the condition. Is 10 lesser than or equal to 10? Yes. 10 will get printed. Goes back. Now, i will become 12. See, 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 will get initialized back to i here. So, is 12 lesser than or equal to 10? No, stop it. And I have got the necessary output. So, that is the reason when I tell i equals to i plus 2, we can also write it as i plus equal to 2. Assignment operators, a few days I have told you, right? We have to add 2 to i and reinitialize it back to i only. Correct. You understood the importance of assignment operators here. So, this is why we make use of assignment operators. Wherein we are trying to add 2 to i and reinitialize it back to i only. Okay. So, when I tell i plus plus, internal it is like i equal to i plus 1. Okay. When I tell i plus plus, i equal to i plus 1. I am adding 1 to i and reinitialize it back to i only. So, this is how we are supposed to understand and try to print the output in the most brilliant manner. Got it. Clear. Now, if I go back over here, hey, what is my requirement here? Sir, your requirement is to print even numbers, sir. Very good. How will I print even numbers? For loop. Always, you know, try to write for loop. Okay. After writing for loop. Okay. Int i equals to 2, i should be lesser than or equal to 10. So, when I write only i plus 2, let us see what, what will happen. 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. Okay, let us see what will happen if I try to print the value of, uh, you know, I'm just trying to do this. So, now let me see here, okay, what output will I get here. So, when I compile my Java program, 
See, I'm getting the output here. See, I plus two error. It's not a statement. Meaning, I am adding two to I. I'll get the output. But what am I supposed to do with that output? I have to initialize it back to I here. So I have to write it as I equal to I plus two. Now when I compile it, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm executing the previous output. Okay, I have to compile first. After compiling, I have to interpret it. So now did I get the expect output? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Got it. So this is how we are supposed to print. Okay, that the requirement here. Got it. So this is all about the entire data here. Clear? Now similarly. If we are able to print even numbers, we should be able to print what odd numbers also. So, what will be the logic for printing odd numbers? There is some minute changes here. That's it. Minute and the minute, very minute. Can you tell me what will be the data in order to print odd numbers here? Okay. So, I have got okay one output here. Okay. So, this will also work. Okay. I have got one output here. Okay, sir. So they have sent me in the chat box here. This will also work fine, but with this comparatively efficient here. So this is what we are supposed to see. Doing one program has several ways. Okay, I am trying to do the simplest way. Okay, see, I'll tell you one one important part. Logical thinking is up to their capabilities. Correct. So I cannot uh, you know tell that oh your logical thinking you have to do it in the same way. No, not at all. Your thinking is different. My thinking is different. So whatever I'm trying to do here, okay, is the simplest manner, and even you can explore it in doing it in multiple ways. It's not that you have to follow the same structure now. Nah. Okay, no problem at all. If you're trying to follow different structure, it's absolutely valid, not a problem at all. But the only thing is, try to get the output. Okay, this is what I wanted. Okay, this is all about the entire data here. Clear? Great. Perfect. Can you tell me what will be the logic of printing the uh, odd numbers here, one, three, five, nine. Okay, sir. Very simple, sir. You are printing first one, sir. I will print one over here. Clear? Now, sir, you are printing till nine, sir. I will write it as nine, sir. That's it. Will this be same? Can I also write it as i plus equal to? Why, sir? One, two, three plus two, three to five plus two, five to seven plus two, five, seven to nine plus two. So there is a gradual increment of two only. So therefore, I won't do anything over here. So directly, I will compile, okay, and interpret it. So I will absolutely get the output as one, three, five, seven, nine. Clear? Understood the program here, okay? So this is all about, okay? How do you logically think, okay? And how do you print the entire process here? Clear? Understood here? This is all about what for loop here. How do we work around with the general for loop here? Clear. This is all about the entire process case. Okay. So anyone having any questions as of now here? Okay. Any questions? I hope we have done so many programs here that you can easily uh, derive a output now. Okay. So anybody having any questions guys as of now? No, right? So everyone are confident enough, right? With respect to loopings. Okay, great. Okay, now let me give a couple of assignments, guys. Okay, don't mind me giving assignments here. Okay, uh, this is for your knowledge perspective. Okay, first one is write a Java program. Okay, not now. Okay, I'm just write, developing the program. Write a Java program to print even numbers from from 1 to 10. Sir, you did it now, so no, sir. Why, why, why are you giving it again, sir? I will tell you. Okay. I will tell you. Write a Java program to print odd numbers from 1 to 10. Okay. Third program, write a Java program to print, to print, um, to print multiples of 3. From 1 to 15. Got the clarity, guys? So you have to print even numbers and odd numbers from 1 to 10. But you cannot make use of this logic here. So I have written it in one way. I have written it in one way. 
you have to write it in another way i have sent you one more way in the chat box excluding that okay whatever i have done and i have sent in the chat, chat box excluding that you have to think about a different logic here and try to give i'll give you one hint here you'll have one for loop and you'll have one if condition okay so you have to make use of this for loop and if condition in order to get this data here so if you know how do we check even or odd okay i told a few days back how do we check if a number is even or odd if you know that and if you know for loop okay you'll be able to print it and you have to print the multiples of 3 okay what is the multiples of 3 uh, 3 6 9 12 15 15. so you have to print the multiples of 3 from 1 to 5 here a 1 to 15 here sorry so these are the three programs okay three for loops you will have okay so how will you do it it's your job okay you have to think you have to google it you have to understand it you have to do a lot of research that is up to your uh, perspective okay i'm not going to talk about it but i want the output okay you can just drop me a message okay after doing you can drop me a message don't worry you know i'm giving a hell lot of assignments here okay for what reason am i giving it for your your perspective right so whenever you find time here try to do it okay see i'll tell you one common human tendency guys okay until it's till our neck no we will not have that seriousness here okay uh, okay that is what i'm trying to tell here we would take it very lightly okay so i have to study okay we'll study tomorrow oh, okay procrastination we keep on postponing the things here oh we'll do it tomorrow it's easy right we'll do we'll study tomorrow but we will not have that interest to open our books open our laptop and start practicing but trust me once you kick start that first initial step is very crucial once you gain that remaining things will fall in place here okay so this is what we are supposed to talk about the entire process okay got it i hope you all got the clarity about okay what is this entire data here okay now now this is small program okay i'll do one small process what is this that sir how can i print the data in a same line okay same line i will tell you here okay there's one question let me do it sir everything here is printed that way okay i want to print even numbers in a single line 2 4 6 8 in a single line how will i do it simple you will have the same for loop guys you will have the same for loop rather than having ln you will use print so when i use print here look what will happen here when i use print here it will be printed in the same line can you see 2 4 6 8 10 is printed in the same line but sir i want uh, a proper alignment so after printing i give a space so what will happen i is 2 is 2 lesser than or equal to 10 yes i can write this as i plus equal to 2 meaning i am incrementing i am adding 2 to i and reinitializing it back to i so 2 space 4 space 6 space 8 space 10 space so that way you know i will get the output in the most beautiful manner here if i show this output here did i get the output see 2 4 6 8 10 i have got the desired output here okay so this is how we are supposed to derive at the output here clear so you can do it in the same line or a different line it doesn't matter it's all about our capability uh, capability levels how good you can derive it clear got it this is all about it but now i will do one more small program here logical program okay uh, okay what is that sir okay now here i want you all to find out okay what is the question here the question is sum of okay sum of n natural numbers this is your question what is it sum of n natural numbers here sir what does it mean sir sum of n natural numbers i will tell you if i give my n value as 3 so 3 meaning 1 plus 2 plus 3 i have to add okay uh, from 1 till 3 if i give it as 6 n value is 6 i have to tell 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 from 1 till 6 i have to add all those data if i give the value of 10 here 1 to 10 i have to get the sum okay this is nothing but the sum of n natural numbers so now imagine my n value is 5 what does it mean 
I have to make you make use of a logic called as 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Clear? How will we do it here? How will we do it here? Sir, it's very simple, sir. Okay, it's very simple. If int n equals to 5, meaning I have to traverse, you know, till 5. So I'll make use of a looping statement. Okay. For int i equals to 1. Why 1? Because I have, I have to start my addition from 1 only. Correct. i is equal to 1. Then i should be lesser than or equal to n. Because till 5 I need to traverse. And gradually I have to increment by 1. So this loop is very easy. Correct. This loop is very easy. Okay. But now internally what am I supposed to do? This is what it matters. Internally what will I do? This is what it matters. Okay. Now I will take a variable called as int sum equals to 0. Why? Because I have to add and store it into one container. No, I will write it as sum equals to 0. So therefore, what will I do over here? n value is 5, meaning I am traversing till 5, meaning 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 till 5. And then sum equals to 0. Why is sum equal to 0? Sir, I have to add and store it somewhere. No. So initially it is 0. I will add, I will keep on storing. But what is the business logic here? Sir, the business logic is sum equals to sum plus i here. Sir, what is that, sir? I will explain. I will explain with an example. Okay. First, what is my i value, guys? i value is 1. I check the condition. Is 1 lesser than or equal to C? I check. Is 1 lesser than or equal to N? What is N value? 5. True. Yes. Control will come inside. What is sum? 0. 0 plus I is 1. What is 0 plus I? It's 1. 1 will get stored into sum here. Sum will become 1 here. After that it goes back to I plus plus. I value will become what now? 2. Okay. Now again I check the condition. Is 2 lesser than or equal to 5? Yes. Control will come inside. What is sum? It is 1 now because I have added 1 here. 1 plus 2. What is 1 plus 2? 3. 3 will get stored into sum. Okay. Sum will become 3. Again it goes back. I plus plus. What will be my I value? Now it will become 3. Now again check the condition. Is 3 lesser than or equal to 5? Yes. Again comes inside. What is sum value? It's 3. Plus i value is 3. 3 plus 3, it is 6. 6 will get stored into sum. Uh, again goes back i plus plus. Okay, i plus plus meaning what will be my i value? It will become 4. Is 4 lesser than or equal to 5? Yes, control comes inside. What is my sum? 6. 6 plus 4, 10. 10 will get stored into sum. Sum will become 10. Again, the control will go back i plus plus. What will be my value? It will become 5. Is 5 lesser than or equal to 5? Yes, it's true. Control will come inside. What is my sum value? 10. 10 plus 5? 15. 15 will get stored into sum here. Again, the loop will go back. I plus plus. What will be my value? I value will become 6. Is 6 lesser than or equal to 5? No, stop it. And what is the sum now? Sum is 15. Got it. This can also be written as sum plus equal to i like i keep on adding the i value to my sum first i'll add 1 2 3 4 5 i keep on storing see initially it was 0 once i added 1 it became 1 then 1 and 2 3 uh, 2 and 3 6 6 and 4 10 10 plus 4 15 so i value is changing see 1 2 3 4 5 so i value I need to add with the previous sum whatever is the previous sum i have to keep on adding so this is how we are supposed to calculate the sum of n natural numbers here. Okay. So this is how logically we have to work around with it. Okay. Now it's no big deal guys. Trust me. It's no big deal. Okay. We have to just analyze it. If you want see here, I'll tell int n equals to, okay, uh, 5 for one for loop. Okay. One simple for loop you need to have. Okay. And you have to print the sum also system dot out dot print ln and I have to print the sum here. So what should be the logic? I should start from one and I have to end it till n. Why? Till five only I need to add no. So from one till five. 
and gradual increment of a of i here. But what is the logic over here? Sum. I should have one more variable outside. Int sum equals to zero. Okay, and I have to tell sum equals to sum plus i here. That is nothing but sum plus equal to i here. Okay, we're done with this process. Okay, after printing it, so after looping it, you will get the output. See, when I compile my program and when I interpret it, I will definitely get the expected output. Where the hell is output, sir? I will show it to you. Oh, wait. And did I get the expected output as 15? Okay, so this is what we are supposed to understand. I got the output as what? I got the output as 15. Okay, if you want to cross check, I will compile it again and I will interpret it. So you will get the desired output. Okay, if you want to cross check, you can go back here. Can you see here? 15. Okay, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 15. I got the output as 15. So this is all about the entire process here. Okay, you got the basic idea. What is n value? Till 5 I need to calculate. Why sum equal to 0? Why? Because, sir, I want to add and store it somewhere now, sir. That's the reason. One for loop for traversing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1 by 1, 1 by 1, 1 by 1. And I, this is the business logic for add, adding and storing. Adding and storing. Adding and storing. After that, I will print the sum back to you. Okay. So, this is all about the entire process. If you want, you can do it like this also. Concatenate. Okay. The ultimate process is yours here. Okay, so this is all about, okay, the entire process here, clear? So we are left out with a lot of different topics such as a while loop, do while loop and break, continue, nested for loop, okay? So these all things will start doing it in the coming session here, okay? So any queries here, anyone, anyone having any questions? And I'm planning to start your aptitude, okay, your SQL and web batches as well, okay, parallelly by this week you know you'll be attending two or three classes okay with java you'll be attending either aptitude or sql or web okay i'll plan up and i'll schedule it and i'll let you know so whichever you know you're good at okay i mean uh, flexible at so you can start attending all of those okay so great guys okay so any question in today's session anyone do you all have any questions in today's session here guys any question Okay, perfect. Okay, so try to work on the assignment which I gave here immediately. Okay, so try to do those assignments and if at all you come across any doubts here, do let me know. So we should try to solve it here. Okay, so great guys. Okay, so we should wind up a session for today and catch up tomorrow. Okay, so this is all about it. And there is one more, there is one more question. Uh, can there be executable uh, in condition or initialization sections here? It can, but in other languages, we tend to do it, okay? But in Java, we don't do it. I got your question here. Can we have executable statements here, basically? We could, but in other languages such as C, we, we can do it easily. But yeah, in Java, we could, but we don't generally follow it, okay? It's possible, okay? But we don't generally do it, okay? But these are also executable, right? Okay, so it's like when I write I++, it's getting executed. But you can have, okay, executable statements but we don't generally follow it, okay? So great guys, okay, done. Perfect guys, okay, so we shall wind up the session for today and catch up tomorrow, okay? So thank you all, take care, bye-bye, have a nice day.